Let us do another example. Think of an asset that is to be used over a five-year period. In accounting, we depreciate it over five years. Now assume the government lets us depreciate it over a two-year period. We will have a tax bill of $10 the first two years and then a tax bill of $20 in years three to five. Please note that the tax bill is larger later as compared to earlier. After the two years have passed, we no more have the depreciation deduction. In the financial statements, the treatment is different. We have a depreciation of 20 a year for five years, and our EBT is 80. At 20%, the tax expense is 16. Now remember, on the tax bill, we had to pay 10 the first two years. So if the expense is 16 and the tax bill is 10, we are paying less by six and registering a deferred tax liability. In years three to five, the relationship is reversed. We have a tax expense of 16 and the tax bill is 20. So we have to pay four more each year and the deferred tax liability starts to decrease. The concepts you are dealing with here are simple, although they sound complex. If you pay cash in advance, it is a prepaid asset. And we know this from earlier chapters. If we pay taxes in advance, it is the same thing. But instead of prepaid assets, we call it a deferred tax asset. Now, if we owe a supplier, we call it an accounts payable. If we owe the tax authorities, we call it deferred tax liabilities. Simple, simple. The previous three slides were about temporary differences, where our tax bill and tax expense are not happening at the same time. So a timing issue. Now we go to permanent differences. A permanent difference is where the official tax rate is 20%, but you end up paying either more or less than the official rate. In a tax system at 20%, each dollar of revenue leads to taxes paid of 20 cents, and each dollar of expenses leads to a deduction of 20 cents. So more revenues means more taxes. More expenses is less taxes. Governments have many tricks to push us into doing good stuff. These include lower taxes on revenues or higher deduction on expenses. At the same time, it also has many tricks to take us away from the bad stuff, like higher taxes on revenues and lower tax deductions on expenses. Let us do some examples. To encourage good behavior, governments can apply lower tax rates on the sales of solar panels or increase deductions on expenses that include ESG and R&D. To reduce undesired behavior, governments can increase tax rates if you are selling pollutants, or they will decrease deductions if your expenses involve pollutants. To be honest, the tax code is very big and very complex. I think it is about 2,600 pages for the US code and another 70,000 pages of interpretations. European tax codes are even longer. So the amount of deductions or higher rates applied are in the thousands. Building sports arenas has a favorable tax treatment, for example. So long as you use the facility for sports more than 20% of its total usage time. If you have a business and you buy cat food for your cat, that is also deducted because cats drive away mice, it seems. And mice are bad for business. Things like this, very long list of things like this. Let me do an example. Assume you are selling wind farms and the government forgives 25% of your revenues for taxation purposes. Now, your cash revenues on the tax filing are only 750 from a total of 1000. However, on the income statement, your revenues are still 1000. So your effective tax rate is lower 
and you pay only a tax of 90 at the effective rate of 12.9%. If a company is doing R&D, it generally receives a nice deduction. In the US, that deduction is an extra 25%. In the UK, the R&D tax deduction used to be 300%. Now you assume you have $200 of R&D, which is deducted at a rate of 300%. On your tax filing, your expenses are much more and you pay taxes of only 60 for a total rate of only 